What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back for another episode of Bodybuilding University. We've got Stu Sutherland, Beef Stu, who just finished second in the 2023 New York Pro. We've got Brett the Butcher Wilkin, um, who's obviously days out from having a baby. And we've got Sound and Stan Delonjou, who's how many weeks out now from the Orlando show? That's right, six weeks out. Six weeks, man. And I saw you put up a video and you're looking ridiculous. We might pull that up soon. I saw at least, maybe it's on your story. I can't remember, but how are you feeling yeah. about how you're looking? Uh, I'm feeling good. I mean, you know, Patrick is never satisfied until the conditioning is there. So <laughs> it's still yeah. got waste. But, uh, you look pretty pretty, good. pretty sharp at like 11 weeks out. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm not suffering like crazy, but yeah. it's definitely and enough easy. And I'll go to Brett first and then we'll get to Stu. But Brett, man, how's how's everything going in the household? Obviously, Ivana's like days out from having a baby. And I know like that sort of excitement, it's like nervousness, excitement, but mostly excitement for, was for me. But how are you feeling, man? Well, to be honest with you, she's in the other room having contractions right now. So it's just, really yeah, I mean, they, they just they dip out. started. So um, honestly, by the time this podcast comes out, it'll maybe will probably be here. So I'm thinking tomorrow. Uh, because we, we went, we had an appointment yesterday, so not getting into too much details, but like diaphragm's not open yet, so but contraction has started, so now it's the next step. So we're thinking mm -hmm. tomorrow it will be here. So that's why I said I'll jump on this today because I don't think I'll have any options the rest of the week. So but yeah, yeah course, man. I'm excited, and um, um, that's just you know, mentally getting ready for this and getting a little extra sleep because I know these next two days won't be much, so mm -hmm. um, can't can't write it up any better. Yeah. Are you planning to like take the baby home straight away? Like, or are you going to like sort of use the hospital as much as possible? No. Yeah. As, as soon as we can. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. want to be here very long at all. <laughs> Just rack up a I think, bill. <laughs> yeah. I think some people, they get like sort of like nervous. Like, I know someone who stayed there for just weeks and they didn't even need to. They just stayed there because they're like, we don't know how to care for a baby. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I, I get it to make sure everything's, you know, prime and good to go. But if, as long as they give you the, it, you know the okay they get out of there we're out you know yeah um, and everything's set up here so it'll be perfect yeah it was very surreal like when i had my daughter like we went into hospital was like very like calm but she came out in like 30 minutes like it was really really quick it was just like <laughs> contractions out in 30 minutes it was like the like the people who were meant to deliver the baby didn't even come in it's just the midwife that was there and one person delivered the baby then all of a sudden i'm holding her and i'm like that was so quick and easy. It was ridiculous. And then we were home, like, we meant to wait at least four hours till you're able to actually take your baby home just to be sure. I took, we took her home like three hours and 15 minutes later. They're like, oh, you're fine. You know, this is a baby you've had. Yeah, I was thinking more like when you were talking, I thought you were like, are you going to stay there for like one day or like three or four days? Like, I didn't think you, you stayed there for four hours. Dude, I was home four hours later with my daughter. I'm like, I wow, that was. I don't think they'll let you do that here in the United States. <laughs> Express check out. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome, man. Like contractions that day went in home like that afternoon. It was like sweet. That's what you have to do. I mean, I, I I wish it was like that. You're I would definitely do that, but that's that's insane. Yeah, it, it actually made me feel a little bit nervous because it was so quick. But um <laughs> anyway, Stu, I'll get on to you, man. What's been going on? Uh obviously he's we the, know what's been going on. He's the busy one. He's the busy one. We want to hear more about it. Yeah, I uh, well, you know, we spoke last night, Xavier, but uh, I, I'm just kind of trying to kill, uh, trying to kill time you know, <laughs> these last few days here. Um, just get every go on the ducks in a row before we uh, drive over to Cali on uh, on Thursday. So just went grocery shopping. I'm gonna cook up all my shit, and I, I you know, the last couple of days before a show, uh, I, I took it off work, so I don't really have shit to do right now. I'm just kind of just going through everything very slow and boring and it's fine though my head's in a good spot so i slept i finally you? slept good for the last couple of nights because that, that weekend was exhausting um so i'm feeling pretty good right now how long a drive will that be uh it's like six or seven hours Not bad. but it's like straight across the desert so it'll just be bombing the whole time nice very nice man that's exciting. And how do you, obviously, like we discussed it in our one-on-one -on -one interview, which will be up just before this uh, episode. So I encourage everyone, if you want to watch that, the link is in the description below. But how do you feel about the whole weekend? Like we sort of discussed it on the other podcast, but how was it like, obviously he's on stage, final two call out, for, uh, not your first pro show, but essentially your first proper prep for a pro show. 
how did it how did it all go for you and how do you feel about second in that show? Uh well, you know, you know, it wasn't like like everybody knows, it wasn't like the most stacked New York lineup. But I, you know, that was an opportunity for a lot of us to kind of show our faces up there. And um, I'm really happy with how I compared to Tony on some of the shots, especially like the back shots and stuff, because he's got this just crazy looking back that's you know, he looks twice as wide as he really is um, in some of those shots. And I actually hung with him. I don't know if I beat him, but like, you know, I did look out of place there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the package I brought. And um, Tony just showed up, you know, as good as he ever has. Um, so I can't complain about that. Yeah. And we're seeing you on stage now, like Brett, obviously like we'll, we'll go into a bit of a New York sort of wrap up discuss, obviously Tony owns Stu. But Brett, what did you think about obviously Stu's appearance? Like, because for me, like he exceeded expectations. It's just the fact that Tonio was there, but he didn't get the win. I think so. Like I said, Stu, Stu showed up. He did it, man. It was just the preparation for it. Um, this is the Stu, uh, you know, we were wanting to see. Like, I remember we did a podcast last year. And I still remember this. And I, wonder, I wonder, I don't think Stu listened to it, but I wasn't negative towards him, but remember after you went pro, Stu, you went and did that. Was it Tampa? Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking on there, and they were like, how do you think Stu will do? And I was like, I don't. I mean, the thing is, like, I think Stu could get, get up maybe fourth at the best, you know, but I don't think he should do this show. And the reason I said that, just because, like, I knew that you were going to level up your next competition, right? And you, you immediately jumped into that, which is, was a good idea because you were in shape and everything. And you got, what, seventh, eighth, sixth, seventh, eighth? Uh, I got seventh there. Yeah, I screwed some things up at that show for sure. Yeah, and then, I but had, like, I knew, like, I knew the like was week. there with another, with another off season. And then, like, this right here, what we're looking at, man, like, kudos to you. You did your work. You did the off season. And the thing is, like, you just that, that, that absence from the stage and putting that work in, you came out and then judged, like, holy shit, you know, like, from the last time we saw you. So, um, I, you know, I, it was a great show. And you guys, I think you peaked really well. I, you know, I wasn't obviously behind the scenes. I haven't watched too much, obviously, been a little busy with things. Um, sure. <laughs> it just came down to, I mean, you had the size on the backside, you had the lower half, like you said, you, you compared mm -hmm. it. I mean, his, you know, obviously his bubbliness of just genetics are going to take yeah. over a little bit, especially on that back where it's just like, you know, he's just bubbly. Like, you know, that like, but you know, overall body willing wise and the, the work that you've been able to, the, the progress is it's very impressive and you're going to do very well this weekend as well. So kudos <laughs> to you just keep enjoying it, man. So it, you made a name for yourself. So I got a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. What was, you know, from the takeaway from this weekend, you know, I'm sure you got a lot of attention, a lot of people talking to you. What, what was kind of the highlight of the weekend for you? Not, and I know it's just, you got second place at the New York pro that that's a highlight in itself, but what sticks out the most for the weekend for you? Honestly, it was probably just spending a bunch of time with my buddies over there. I got a, a friend named Matt and Gio. Um, we're, we're in this discord body. I was talking to Xavier about it last night. Uh, we have this discord server that we kind of just talk shit in a bunch. And uh, they live over in New York. So I stayed with them a couple days beforehand and oh, like shit. just hanging out with them a bunch and going to Bev's and shit. Like that was as much fun, if not more than the actual show. Cause you know, I just get, get to hang out with my boys for a few days, peak for a bodybuilding show, cook some food, you know, it was, it was, guys, that you, guys that you usually only know online you were able to actually be in person with and actually train yeah, yeah. i saw you yeah, at yeah. A lot. it seemed like you were there a lot like um and like always like eyeing up the competition and stuff. <laughs> yeah yeah matt, uh, my buddy matt lives like five minutes away from it so I was, I was at his place and we were just zipping back and forth and i got to get in front of steve uh on what thursday yes thursday um you had a couple of posing tweaks for me that I tried to implement, but uh, yeah, it's, it was it was just being in that like in that environment. I don't know if you've been to Bev's before, but it's like all of all of the magazines on the wall and the pictures and the signed posters, and it's it's just something else if you're a fan like me. And it's uh, it was a lot of fun to just be in that environment, you know. So what was the what was the feedback you got from either before or after the show that you're you're testing <clears throat> the most? Uh, so. Steve just had a couple of posing tweaks. Like he had me hit my most muscular a little more upright instead of like, or, uh, you know how Phil Heath like really comes over the top but then shows off his arms and delts. Yeah, I was kind of doing that before, but I don't have Phil Heath arms and delts, so uh, I kind of stood up a little further um, and you know 
displayed my packs a little more. And I think that was a better way to hit it. Just little shit like that. But after the show, I didn't talk to Tyler. I talked to Steve. And I presume they chatted with each other. And he said, he told me, I, I won in shape and size, but I got beat on conditioning. And after looking at the pictures, I would agree with that. Um, I think at any other show, like Tonio has not been this hard before. Uh, like I probably would have beaten Tonio if, like if it was Olymp- his Olympia showing or like maybe even the Legion last year. But like he was, he was really hard. Um, and I think, I think it's kind of a muscle maturity thing more so than like a leanness thing. Cause like there's, there's not, you know, pinching the skin on my ass. There's like, not, there's nothing there. Right. Uh, it, was, it was pretty dry. It's just, you know, I'm 26. I got to keep doing this for a little longer and it'll come. But um, overall, like, I don't think I could have peaked much better for the show. So I'm happy with that. Hell yeah. Well, I agree. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And Stan, obviously, you got to see um, Beef Stew on stage this weekend. And like I said, when we got on here, you're like, man, what a day, what a, what a show, you know, what a showing. And yeah. um, it was awesome. And it's crazy. Like, I actually thought, like, with so much talent and the depth of talent now in bodybuilding, because look at like a couple of years ago, 2019, you had in the top 10 at the Olympia, no discredit to anyone who placed in the top 10, but the guys on the outside of the top 10 and then just outside that, like, you know, then, you know, you got 10th down to 16th and then you've got a few guys down there. It's just not at the level I think it's at now because you've got so many guys, you know, like you, Brett, you missed out on the Olympia last year, but you beat guys that were on that Olympia stage in your shows. So it goes to show like the level of talent right now and how deep it is. And now you've got, I thought we might have an off year where we don't see guys like Stu, Antonio improving, and all that sort of stuff. I didn't think we'd maybe see it at the very start of the year, just because I thought we'll have an off year eventually, but we haven't. So obviously seeing Stu, what do you think of Stu? And I suppose, what do you guys think about the current like depth of talent in bodybuilding? Because it seems like it's just improved a ton. Oh yeah, it's definitely like hyper expanding the last uh, couple of years. I mean, we were talking about like, you know, the 2019, 2020 uh, years where it was kind of like, not that deep, you know, there was a lot of people retiring, like the new, the old generation was kind of going away. Um, and now we have all, all those people who crossed over, like Crizo, you know, like uh, like all these, like Andrew and uh, all these people that just came like out of, kind of out of nowhere and had an impact right away. Even even Nick, you know, even like right now, Stu. Like I, what I was impressed by this weekend was I saw you last year at the USA's uh, when you got your pro card. And it was just the size on the stage next to, um, to, to like Tonio looks small, <laughs> like he looked great. Like he looked like he's well, really well put together, all the details, the roundness, but you made him look really small. And I was really impressed by that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think, I think like the thing to note here is like, there's so, there's a couple of guys like Crizo, Andrew and stuff like they're, they're kind of in their mid thirties. I think they're a little older, but a lot of the newer guys that I have BB who are like doing good now, like, Brett, you're only like 30, right? You're, you're no, I'm, I'm 30. I'm 34. I just started late. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because you were playing sports and like actual sports. That's balls, just... right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, you, you started later and like you're only a few years into your like serious open bodybuilding career. And <clears> you know, <throat> Martin, you know, the list goes on. Tonio just moved up to open last year. And like, we're just going to keep on improving year to year. And, you know, but by the time I hit 30, 31, I hope I hope I'll like be consistently in the mix. Um, you know, once I have some of the more, more bells and whistles that you need to be competitive at a high level. But you know, a lot of us are just getting started in the grand scheme of things. Mm. Mm. I think it's also, a big, yeah. I think it's a big yeah. storm of like a combination of things. I think it's we're getting the guys over, like you said, Crizo. You know, Andrew Jack came out of nowhere, right? So you got these big names, you know, good vetoes coming. Like we're getting these, the bigger names are finally coming over. Um, we got good up and comers, like you just talked about, you know, these new Tonio, Martin, Stu here. Um, but also, I think a big thing is also the 212 division. They finally decide to start, you know, stepping up and going into the open, right? You know, because yeah. think about like Flex Lewis, right? He did seven, you know, he was going to do it at the very end, but then it was, it was kind of too late, honestly. Like, you know, it, it really was, you know, he had a hard time being able to eat that much. What if he would have tried when he was younger? You know what I mean? Like, what mm-hmm. if he would have tried after he won two, like Derek, you know what I mean? After he spent four or five years there, time to move up. 
you know, then we would saw a whole different wave of guys in that top five, right? Instead of always just being the same, because he would have snuck in there. Um, so I think it was just like, you know, a combination of Sean and also Derek taking that leap of faith, knowing that, hey, I can compete with these guys. And then, you know, Derek actually just going for it. And Hottie, oh, yeah. my bad. <laughs> oh, owning our Olympic champion. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Hottie as well. Yeah. It like shows like, hey, you know, it's not so much about, you know, we have we have the we have the conditioning, we have the enough size, um, and we definitely have the shape to be competitive. And it's just a combination of all of this together. Mm-hmm. I think well, the, something the, that sucks too is like the, a lot of 212. I was talking to one of the guys who did uh 212 in New York, um, and he was like, There's like no 212 shows domestically here in the States. Uh, I mean, yeah, you got to go like international, uh, you know, get a passport, pay all that money to go to a show out there. If you want to try and qualify now, and there's just like not a lot of opportunities for those guys. Mm -hmm. And they're getting paid dick if they win a show, too, Mm -hmm. which is kind of which kind of sucks. Yeah, but 212 is sort of brutal in terms of prize money. I suppose a lot of the divisions are, I mean, including open bodybuilding, to be honest, like it's the same prize money as it was like. 20 years ago or however long it was like but they started doing 10k for the smaller shows so i don't know how we resurrect that like i always think like a a live streaming channel and then somehow just be able to produce more money through the industry and getting more sponsors and whatnot but what you're saying before brett when you were saying about the like the 212 guys coming up i remember hearing i heard this back in the day just you know rumors about you know them the federation of organization not liking the 212 guys going up to open and then going back and switching between the two and flex and jose sort of spoke about that when they did a podcast on um uh, straight out of the lair podcast on flex lewis's channel and they sort of said like jose was sort of like oh it was sort of like you know you felt like uh, is it frowned upon to actually do that and guys i think were hesitant to so do you think like that's part of a reason why they weren't doing it back then because i, I saw the odd guy do it like david henry did the open in australia one year um, and a few guys did the odd show, but it was like very infrequent. Sure, yeah. yeah, I mean that that's probably the answer right there. That's through the, he's literally telling you why he, they didn't do it. Um, probably yeah. also being a little bit of scared of well, they well, thinking maybe they'd get penalized. You know what I mean? Like not yeah. not place as well in the two twelve or something. They were already you know him and Flex were already getting one and one two in all the competitions, so they didn't really want to mess with it. And they already had their yeah. contracts. They were getting paid more anyway that back then anyway. Um, it'd be interesting. <laughs> I mean, I, we could easily do this, but I, I want to know the inflation rate from what was ten thousand dollars back in like nineteen ninety compared to now. So you know, it'd be like what thirty five, forty thousand we should be getting compared to what they were. Uh, that's yeah, totally. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's why I want to see. Like, there's a lot of I spoke about this on a bodybuilding news live <laughs> once, and I was saying how I can't remember why I was speaking about it, but. There's so many guys that are, have a decent name in terms of like popularity or they've got a lot of money that are really into bodybuilding. And I don't know if it's the nature of the industry or what it is or if it's the image of it or what, but Patrick Bet David, who's obviously got his um, Patrick Bet David podcast and everything that's on YouTube that does very, very well now. And he's, you know, has a lot of money. He's, a, he's an entrepreneur and does obviously very well for himself. He made a comment um, when he interviewed Wayne D'Amelia about, he said, oh, no one basically let him know the Olympia was for sale because he was basically interested. So obviously Jake Wood bought the Olympia and um, he, he found out after the ma- after the fact. Uh, but, you know, there's guys like that. Shaquille O'Neal loves bodybuilding. You've got The Rock who's going to do Athleticon. It seems like there's a lot of guys. And, and then you see every year there's celebrities going, Mark Wahlberg, a ton of guys going to the Olympia. And obviously they've got huge names and I suppose we do get a bit of publicity out of that, but it seems very little for how big a names are into it. Like, is there anything we could, not we personally, but, you know, the Federation or anyone could do to try to bring these characters into bodybuilding and get, you know, pro shows being run by these guys maybe and somehow incentivize them? I mean, it's all the idea is entertainment. Like, it's finding ways to make the whole show more entertaining. And I think mm-hmm. we're very limited as far as, like, the show part, like the stage part, because... We're not going to revolutionize the, the sport, <clears throat> but what they could do, like I don't know at what level, like either like show promoters or even the league, <clears throat> is having like crews that really like follows like at least the top athletes, you know, top five, top ten, or some each division, and like really do like like a bodybuilding channel, but like you got in, you know inside footage of like what people are going through and like going back and forth trying to create some rivalry, some like more like uh, fighter kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would help something in that line. 
Yeah, I think it's it's, it's about meteor. I think part of it with the smaller shows, you know, you're talking about like it's been ten grand for like a couple of decades now. If you want a smaller show, right? I mean, these these promoters are running businesses. They're they're trying to make money at these shows, um, and you know, <coughs> if, if the current system is working, and you know, you still have pros showing up to compete, even though they're not really getting paid much if they win, it's like, you know, why why would you change anything if you get to mm-hmm. pocket more money at the end of the day? I mean, there's no, there, we don't really have any leverage as competitors uh, against like the promoters to like demand more money out of them, you know. Um, so it, it, the status quo just kind of sustains itself in that respect. You know, bigger shows like the Arnold, they they jack up the prize money. The the Olympia, that's a that's a big chunk of change if you're in the top five there. But I mean, the other ones are like you know just kind of business as usual. Hmm. And it's actually gone backwards because. Uh, outside of the prize money for the Olympia and the Arnold obviously going up now, but outside of that, we had shows post Olympia that were giving away like 50 grand for first or 75 for first. You had the EV- EVLS, um, Prague Pro, you had a whole bunch of Shrew yeah. Classic one year. They were giving away over 100,000, I think it's 150 or so for the winner uh, when, you know, Jay and Phil and everyone went out there. So there was more money then. I mean, I don't know how we get that back into the sport, but uh, like a prize money outside of the Olympia and Arnold has literally gone down. So it's like, it's something that I think needs to be resurrected. Like, what do you think, Brett, in terms of ideas for, I suppose, being able to maybe charge more sponsors, get more sponsors into the sport. And these promoters, obviously, that run pro contests, they're not making their money generally on the pro contest. It's normally the amateur that's attached to it that might attract more amateurs to do it if there's pro attached to it i don't know um theory there but obviously we've seen indie pro go away this year um stan the show you were going to do puerto rico pro that's gone away i don't know if that's a money thing or what but it seems like you know everyone needs to make money but obviously the final product needs to be more appealing i suppose to the masses do you did you see that also another show that went away that boston pro show that now that's getting like some question boston scam show yeah i was like <laughs> When the, when that was going on last year, I was sitting there scratch. I, I text Phil Heath when I saw like I go, yo, what's going up with this? Like, how is it, how is some dude paying you, Ronnie Flex, like everybody, you know, every bodybuilder to come out and do an appearance? What was the what was the the icon, icon to do like a <laughs> entertainment? I go, something's fishy here, man. Like, hmm. unless this guy is just blowing through money just to like because he enjoy it, you know, that's the only way it can happen, you know, <laughs> at this time and age. Is like that he just he's spending his personal money. Then come to find out, Akon hasn't been paid yet. Maybe I I, I don't know how detail to comment on it, but that's what it sounds like. And, Dude, Akon was 150k. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to what? Like the audience, the audience of what 500 people? Like, come on. <laughs> they, they were saying it. Oh, it's separate and they're separate tickets. But if there's literally like, I, I saw a video from it, and I think there's maybe a couple hundred people there max. Yeah. So they have separate tickets for forty bucks or something. It's like that's not covering one hundred and fifty k. Yeah. So, that, <laughs> so that's what that, that was a real head scratcher. But back to your question, um, one thing that really would have helped us in the, in this one, this is what really sucks. Another just COVID thing was if that athletic con would have went through, because mm-hmm. just the rocks platform would have expanded this more. Even you know, I think more just just to bring awareness to it, just through his social media presence, you know, posting about it, like he's doing with the XFL right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's pushing the XFL because that's his thing, you know? So the athletic con would have been his, but he loves, but he does like bodybuilding. And that would have really brought more eyes, more attention, maybe more sponsorships to the sport. So that would have been huge, I think, for us, which unfortunately didn't come through. So I'm hoping he... I don't think it's completely over. Uh, no, that's why I say I'm hoping it, 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 it's still a thing in the future, you know? I have no idea. Maybe you've heard a little bit more, but I really do hope so. Um, and like, you know, like Stu said, the only only thing we can really do is like, they, you know, the, the promoter, they, they have us, you know? I mean, like, the only thing we could do is if we wanted to, is like band together, which isn't going to happen because not everyone's going to like, you know, I'm not going to do this show until, pri- you know, we're not going to do these shows until prize money does. You know, maybe us three will band together and say that, but there's going to be guys that usually get 14, 15 plays every show that aren't going to do that. And they're going to just show up. Right. So it's yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like, that's not an option either. So it's just about, you know, we just got to continue to grow this the right way. Um, and, you know, I, I'm open for as many suggestions as anybody can put out there too. But one person yeah. that's it's a huge step source right now is Chris Bumstead actually. 
like how he's reaching such huge audience and i think that's how actually a big help for us at the moment yeah and I, that's why i think it's the time to strike in terms of these shows because you got smaller classic physique shows i mean I feel there's some sort of way we can be like, you know, the Federation can be putting stuff out like, is this the next guy to challenge Chris Bumstead? And, you know, you've got to use his name. It's just how it's how YouTube, it's how social media works now. You can put images side by side and, you know, more, maybe more of the younger fans would be sort of sharing that to their stories on Instagram and we can just get more exposure mm -hmm. that sort of way. I mean, you've got a guy that has how many followers? Like 17 million or something? Like it's, I don't know, might be more, might be less, but that is just a huge reach. And like you said, Brett, you've, walk down the streets of Miami with him and people just start following. Like that's <laughs> like he's, he is legit mainstream famous now. So it's like, and I go to the gym now, like, and I see at like after school time, there are so many kids in there. I'm like, that's why Chris Bumstead. And that's why like, you know, you see these other YouTubers that have trained with like Jay Cutler, like Lex Little and all that sort of stuff, but young guys and we see their physique and we're like, Oh yeah, okay for a young guy or whatever. But you look how many subscribers they've got. They got like four hundred thousand, and it's like that's more than most pros and most people in general. So it's like yeah. we've got to try to get that audience, and that's the next wave of people to try to get into bodybuilding. So you got to create more excitement. And like Stan said, I think the shows need to be more exciting. Like you know, have clips of the guys talking before the shows. Like you know, have yeah. one guy that interviews all the people before the show. That you know, that's what I'd do as a promoter. Have ever someone to interview them. If, they're, if it's convenient, say, send us some training footage and you can put all that sort of stuff up where they're talking about the other competitors and stuff before the show. Pop that up on the screen before the posing routines. Just We used to do it with the Olympia and I thought that was awesome. And then it's just, that's gone away. I think that's an entertaining aspect of the sport. So I think, you know, like, like Stu said yesterday when we interviewed, like bodybuilding just on stage now is like, it's a pretty sort of boring sport, you know? So you got to hype it up and stuff with the media and whatnot. And I think we can implement that into the show somehow you know like just to have the, a whole spectacle be more exciting but um yeah i, I don't know what you guys think see about the balance sheets on some of these shows especially like the smaller ones you know your olympia qualifiers and stuff like what where is the money going when you know they're charging for tickets and the amateur competition and like you know it, obviously it's not all going to prize money once upon a time they had enough money to like you know give out those big prizes um so like is it a case of like greedy promoters or is it just like the numbers aren't there like they don't have enough cash to dole out no, they, they I, must I have, they must have they, i said i said they must have way more competitive with the men's physique the bikini the classic now yeah, like there must be way more competitors now than there has ever been yeah so they but, definitely but how does that translate to the pros, though, is like what I question. You mean, yeah, I agree. There's more competitors overall, especially at the amateur levels. But I feel like now after these competitors go pro, we don't see, you know, we don't see that drive anymore that these guys want to be better pros, you know, that with our, or now it's obviously easier to go pro. So they go pro and then they're done because they don't want to take that next step back, mm -hmm. you know. When it was at our, you know, what we're going to talk about the prime or when the, when the money was higher and stuff, you know, it was much harder to go pro, but that people were battling and, and fighting longer to get to that, to get to that, to be that competitive in the pro ranks, right? Yeah. So it could be, you know, just looking at the, the different generation of, of toughness too. I mean, just to be real with it, if you look at the amateur ranks, you just, we have all these new com competitors, and this is something that people talk about all the time. We do have a record number of competitors, but how many bodybuilders are there? I go to shows. I go to shows, and there's two bodybuilders on stage, you know, and there, and that's just because they switched over from classic, right? So it's like, it, it, it's just a different, like, you know, I can, I can probably go pro and classic, but once I get there, I'm done, you know. Mm. They no, bastardized the pro card, man. What, what, what so a point I was trying to make was just the promoters. They, they make enough money for sure to pay more, with all the people who are paying, you know, the entry fees and like the, the, the tanning and the hair and makeup and all that stuff. So the, the, the the promoters are definitely making enough money to, to offer bigger prize money to the pros. Yeah, I don't think they, they just, just, just buy. That's all. <laughs> They're not... Uh... Those promoters might go, well, what's the point of having a pro contest when I'm making all this money from an amateur contest? Because that's yeah. like sanction okay. fees plus prize money for each division. And a lot of people don't... I suppose a lot of fans don't realize that. They pay... I don't know how much the sanction fees are, but I know... 
there's a, you know it's an x mount for an open pro bodybuilding show which costs the most yeah. i think and then you know to have a bikini in 212 i think it's much much cheaper and they have to pay less prize money so that's that's why i'm surprised there's not more 212 shows in america to be honest but um yeah i suppose though when you do an open show you draw more of a media to go out there you know you like your mds and rx and whatnot they were there um at new york as well so it, it's a tough one but yeah i just i think that the maybe the pro show model i mean there's still plenty of people want to put on pro shows so it's not really an issue so it's like why 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 help out the promoters anymore i guess in a way apart from well, the, it might the, be it might be money. simply like the 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 fan base the hardcore fan base that actually really pays the money for in, in bodybuilding they spend the money in bodybuilding mm. maybe you know that crowd is limited and they will spend the money to go to like two three big shows a year like the olympia the arnold and maybe like new york but if you start having more shows like bodybuilders like were there for like those people are not going to show up there because yeah. they can't spend like you know that kind of money every month either so maybe that's yeah. just what you have to work with you know because bodybuilding in itself doesn't generate enough draw as far as regular spectators to to justify the money to pay for bodybuilders. Yeah, no, that's it. That's true. Um, I think they could probably also rationalize paying less money because you hear old timers say this a lot, like, oh, you could just make a bunch of money on social media now. It's so easy nowadays. It's like, mm -hmm. well, not, not, it's not so easy. It's like possible, but it's not so easy. And maybe there's just the expectation that, oh, you're going to make a living you know, selling whatever clothes on your, on your Instagram, um, instead of, you know, actually paying the participants of your contest, which are drawing all these fans. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that's a thought. Mm. And as a bodybuilder now, you have to really be like business savvy as well. You have to have at least some of that about you. I mean, there's basic things you can do, like, you know, sell t-shirts and things like that. But then like Brett, you, what you've done, you've also got like the butcher hooks, which you've, you know, done sort of your own thing, which I, I love to see. And, you know, you, there's different ways you can make money, but if you're just sort of one of those guys that is does have that old school sort of thing, like you'd rather put 110% into bodybuilding and then not have to worry about anything else, then it like today's era doesn't really work for you. And some of those guys probably fall off now because if they're not winning pro shows, um, then they're probably like, uh, you know, bodybuilding sort of not worth it, the health ram ramifications and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's um. Anyway, I want to I want to show Tony as well because I didn't show him earlier. Um, yeah. Hopefully this doesn't mess up my audio. I might actually just show the photos because I think before that was messing up my audio. Hey, while well, you're pulling out real quick before you start, um, Stu, what do you know what happened to that two twelve guy that won it last year? The Noel guy. Uh, oh shoot, he wasn't there. No. He, he didn't make white. It's oh, really? D DNF, so did not finish or whatever. Oh yes, yeah, he, so he could have done bodybuilding. Why he didn't just go on stage at all? That's what I said. So he, he apparently went there. Um, was, like, was actually there, yeah. And he was the lowest he got. Uh, Chris Aceto said he was 217 pounds, and he, he apparently he shredded, but he, he said he just couldn't get him down in weight. And we know Chris Aceto, how much weight did he pull off Reagan Grimes to get to classic? You know, it's like 20 something pounds. So He's he said shot. that I was always, yeah. wondering, I was wondering how that guy ever made weight anyway with those legs he had, you know, yeah. <laughs> lower half. yeah. Yeah, I, I think he sucked him right down. But we saw, like, obviously it didn't look as good for Reagan because he probably, you know, was just a worse version of his open bodybuilding self. But, yeah, the fact that he couldn't get under that weight, like he was five pounds off or whatever it was, it's like Chris said he had a little bit of time off, I think because he had a bit of an injury for the Olympia. And then when he came back, it's like he just put on all this weight. But I was like, why not just try open then if you're busting out yeah. of 212? and. I think that Noel as well, I don't think that he's got the maybe the structure and how much he can hold on his physique because he's been really shredded before capping out the weight limit. So it's like, how much better can you get? And he's, you know, he's maybe on the borderline of a top 10 guy in the world. I was like, why not just try open if you're, if you're busting over weight cap? And also like you would have compared well with Tony also, who's a former 212. Yeah. So I, I don't know why he didn't do it, but. Yeah, I think he's going to – and Aceto said he's going to stick to the 212, so I don't think he's going to go to open, but who knows that was a weird one. To try to get to wait, though, you know, that could have been enough to, like, just ruin his look. Yeah, yeah. He's gone to open. Who knows, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that, to be honest. Um, but it's funny because it's like – it feels like a mental barrier almost. Like, a lot of 212 guys are like, no, I'm too small, I'm too small. And, like, no, like, you're plenty big, you know, like – 
uh, we were talking to Kieran the other day. He was like, no, these guys are huge. I'm like, bro, do you see yourself? Like, in the mirror, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd be very interested to see Keon in open for sure. I mean, they actually spoke about it on Olympia TV and um, Tarek said, he said, he said, this is my prediction. I believe Keon will be doing the 212 in the future. And he's like, Keon, I hope you watch this. <laughs> so he was like, Melvin. What's that? You mean the open? Yeah, the open. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, what I said two twelve, didn't I? Yeah, the open. Yeah, but um, still has like ten pounds he can put on in two twelve. Yeah, yeah, so it's like why go to open then? Hmm. Dude's got yeah. bird bones. <laughs> Doesn't make That's sense. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. But um, here's Tony. I want to pull him up on the screen. This is obviously like. I think he probably exceeded everyone's expectations as did, as did Stu, and that's why he was above Stu. And I said as well, had Tonio from the Olympia in 2022 showed up, I think Stu would have beaten him. But it's just the fact that Tonio improved so much on that package. He was about five pounds heavier and in better condition as well. So probably so you know you know you know his, What was his weight here? I'm not sure, but I spoke to his coach and he said, uh, he was five pounds heavier, and I think Tonio said the same. We well, said five or six or whatever, so he's definitely in better shape as well. Yeah. So yeah, very very impressive. Oh my god, is that on the screen for you or no? Yeah, I can see it. It's just All a right, picture. Cool. Yeah, it's going to go to a few other ones. So obviously the back shots, which we spoke about earlier, and Stu, like when you were standing next to Tonio. Like, I see the individual shots by themselves, and I was like, okay, Tonio's going to clean up from the back, but it wasn't as crazy obvious. But Tonio, like, the difference in his physique when I've seen the side-by-sides, like, his glutes are way more developed. His, yeah. his hamstrings were dramatically bigger. Like, when you see him from the side, he's got that sort of Dexter Jackson look, like, not as dry and crisp, but he's got that same sort of look to it, which uh, that shot will come up shortly, it should do. He'll um, be there, like, in a year or two, though. You know, that extra yeah. level of like conditioning. I mean, yeah, it's not far do off. You, do, you, do you have guys see it as well, like Stan and Brett? Like, do you see this sort of like Dexter Jackson bubbliness that yeah. everyone else is sort of seeing? Oh, I said it. You know, I said it two years ago. I really, you yeah. Know, just, it just especially his core. His core looks just like yeah. Dexter, you know. And then big bubbly from the front, he does back not as much, but definitely from the front. I mean, it's definitely it's not far. It's definitely very like they have a similar shape. <laughs> yeah, Lovely. absolutely. Mm. Needs a little more yeah. lat from the front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I imagine when he does knock on him is like overall width, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, but like again, for like as as narrow as his shoulders kind of are, he still looks wider than he should. In most of his poses, yes, you know, big ass shoulder gaps. Shoulders are yeah. huge, wacky. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing as well. Like everyone said that about Phil, Brett. Like obviously you remember probably coming up. Um, everyone's like Phil's too narrow. Phil will yeah. never be Mister Olympia. He's too narrow. Goes and wins seven Mister Olympias. <laughs> it's like he just said, "Fuck your na- narrow comments," and he just put more muscle on his shoulders, more on his arms, more on his back. Especially that was the one thing that really came up during his career. And I think he's. I mean, Tony already has a good back. He's already got good delts, but um, I still think he can, you know, obviously as he adds more and keeps that waist tight, like his waist looked tighter here than it did at the Olympia. So, and yeah, I have so always about in my videos. Someone posted a comparison. He looked really way improved. I forgot if what I, page. I will say, I will say this though, because I do remember the Olympia last year and I, everyone kind of says something when they don't do really well, but he, he did say that he was like going into Olympia. He was like, really sick or something was going wrong. Um, he had some issues going into the Olympia. So that's obviously, I mean, obviously he's improved greatly, but I, I do remember there was something going that wasn't right during the Olympia for him last year. He'd been yeah, I'd, I'd have to ask him. Year too. He was on stage a lot. Yeah, yeah, just tired, yeah. I bet. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm excited by, by the future. I was, I was impressed with it. It's like he, he brought up, his, especially his posterior chain, um, you know, gluten hams. It, it was much better this year. Like just more detail. Because I, I think that was his knock last year. That like it, there's just no, you know, what they kind of like Andrew Jack. You know, where there's not any like striations really in the hamstrings. They're lean. Yeah. You just don't see much detail. And then this year, I was actually able to see it a little bit. Um, so he, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he he brought it. Like I said, they they did a good job of bringing him in. Yeah, they focused on the right things. Because I said to Tony, I said like, dude, in terms of your conditioning looked good. Like I think it was. Uh, 
whatever shot legion last year when he beat justin rodriguez i was like your conditioning's good i just remember that saying like just glutes and hams i said just get them as hard as possible like as long as you do that and obviously don't flatten out and all that then you'll be improved and improve your posing he definitely improved his posing um there's like one or two little things that i'm like he could still do better but when you see it compared to the olympia of the olympia like his side chest his chest is like falling in he's doing like things where he's pushing his waist forward on poses and it's like that improved a lot too so he's improved every aspect pretty much of his stage presentation so i think that's why he looks so dramatically improved as well so but i'm excited for tonio and i'm excited like we talked about for the whole new crop of guys coming through and i think we're going to see a lot of really competitive shows overall so yeah it's, mm. it's exciting but um We've got the Cali Pro coming up this weekend. There's a competitor um, list out. <laughs> hey, the, question, that? the question is, is Sergio going to be it? No. Yeah, that's... No? He wasn't on the you list. Think he's that'd, be, that'd, be fun. that'd be fun, but... That's the question. I think he is in Dubai today, so I don't think there's any way. Yeah, he's that's the thing. He's getting in the chess, posting shit on his story like he's still there and he's... In San Diego right yeah, now. Yeah, you could, do, you could do very well. He would be the one to do that. That's true. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, like, do you think there's a chance? I mean, there might be a chance, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, <laughs> I can't say. I'm not saying anything. From well, what do you speaking know? to Sergio, well, I what can't say anything. <laughs> well, but, well, I don't. I don't know anything for sure, and I, I don't even oh, yeah, think that. Do. Yeah, yeah, no, not nothing for sure, but um, <laughs> about it, but. And I can't say if he's doing it or not doing it, so you can't <laughs> read what I know into my face. But um, <laughs> there's, I'll go off what Chris Aceto said on Heavy Muscle Radio. He said, for New York Pro, he was basically, Chris was on standby to basically like do the end of his prep, which is what it sounded like. So, Well, I think, he's, he's, been on, I think he's been on standby for the last five weeks. Like that's not, mm-hmm. that's not the thing. The thing is if he can get over here or not, if he's released. So that's what it comes yeah. to. Yeah. He's been ready. But obviously that... There's going to be shows in the, in Europe soon, no? Yeah. Is it late? Right. Is it late? But I think... Yeah, there's back, a couple. If he'd be at home, you know. That's not, if he's able to do that, why not? Yeah, but I, I think there's maybe an outside chance. But obviously, he'd have to be approved to travel, travel last minute and get in there and do it. So it's like, oh, yeah, who knows? I, I would love to see it, man. Like, uh, I would love to see him up there and just to see how him and Tonio compare because this is going to be Tonio's last show of the year and I would just love to see it. But who knows? Chris said that, you know, he said, I was on standby for New York and hopefully he can sort of get over. So um, fingers crossed for Sergio because that sucks. Like, he's been in prep for a long time and it, at a certain point, like, you got to imagine holding that sort of conditioning would start to hurt your physique as well. And I'd hate to see it actually. Sergio have to be ready for... 10 weeks straight or something like that where it starts to affect his look and we don't still don't get to see the best Sergio. You can also help him, you know. He's not, I don't think he's ever had to look, yeah. to, uh, look like that for a long time. And once you like once you're there it's much easier to maintain than when you're digging, you know, like that's when you really feel tired. Usually then you that's have more true. than like you feel. But there's a point where your body is just like, yeah, hey, I shouldn't be that low body fat and yeah. Well he's still looking ridiculous. So as long as he's able to compete soon, you definitely I can't imagine him not doing well. Like, I'll bring yeah. up... Um, just do Toronto, please. Him. Please just do Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, but honestly, it might be good. Like, I mean, I want to say it's good. So it's a good, he's a good, great bodybuilder. But Stu, like, then, like, size-wise, I mean, it would be a good battle for you, you know? Like, yeah. you your guys no, are- no, it would not be. He's so <laughs> big. But well, we want, you want, you want, keep in you mind, he's, like, guys, six foot one, right? And were he's you one of the biggest guys at New York, though? Like... Yeah, but I mean, I'm not six one. I'm like five eight. You know? Biggest no. six. But you're big There's... enough to compare, and then you just got to beat him on conditioning. And how, how much did you weigh on stage at the at last weekend? By two fifty. About two fifty. Oh, okay. I thought you were like yeah. it's still like two seventy, like a week out, two weeks out. No. Oh no no no! I was I was uh, two in the he dro- he dropped like... low to mid two fifties for okay. four weeks or so. Oh, okay. Watch uh, okay. around in there. Oh, you look really so, You can see on the screen here, um, obviously, bodybuilding and BS uh, says, I guess Dubai won't let you leave yet. And then Sergio, this is basically what I know. So he says, I'm fighting, but it takes so long just to get a form filled. I've been at the courthouse last five days in a row trying to get a straight answer. So that's basically what he's doing. So he's trying to get a straight answer on what he can do Unless... in terms of flying. 
He already has a straight answer, and he's fucking with us. He's doing the 1980 Arnold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There, that would be pretty cool to see last minute just jumping in. I actually, I said that to him. I said, if you're able to do it, it'll be like a 1980 Arnold or something at last minute being like, I'm in, which yeah. would be cool to see. But obviously I said, I said to him, I said, but the promoter, promoters probably want your name as soon as possible to put it out there to get, to sell as many tickets as possible as well. So that's why I don't think that stuff will happen these days in terms of guys just last minute jumping into shows. Cause obviously the promoters want to promote their shows. Well, uh, it'd be sort of fun to see. I think in his circumstances it can though because he doesn't, yeah you don't know like hey I, I just got released today and then tell them on they're, they're still gonna let him compete yeah of course for him definitely definitely but if he knows on a monday <laughs> they'd, they'd be like oh, okay cool can i post it up and if he said no nah, i want to just jump in last minute they'd be like eh, but you know what that could, be, that, that could be a good thing too because that could you know that could make the show more like oh last minute there's like big names popping up so people would yeah. follow like people's stories and like what they post, what they share more attentively to like trying to know where to show up if they want to see their favorite, you know, pros. So that could, that he, could he like, draw a lot of people. He's a California guy. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. not originally from Chicago, right? But, you know, he lived down in San Diego forever. Uh, he get a lot of people there. there. Where's the Cal Pro he, at? What, what city? In the yeah. high. That was in such unison. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, I would lo- I would love to see it, and it would would be exciting too. Because Stan, like you were sort of saying, like if that if he jumps in last minute, you said like obviously they're going to be jumping on their social media, and there's going to be more attention that way. But yeah. also like you know me, Nick Strength and Power, or all these other channels, they make yeah, videos saying it's yeah. like Sergio in. Oh, this is exciting now, Sergio. How will he look next to Stu? How will he look next to Tonio? Is he going to be clearly the winner? Is he going to be sort of battling with them very closely? It's like it's. It's an it's interesting conversation, and then you know that I'm sure like Mark's Max Muscle will be doing a side by side Sergio and versus Stu and Sergio versus Tonio, and it's like just more of that excitement. And when you look at the real numbers, like from YouTube, like Nick Strength and Power reaches a lot of people outside the hardcore bodybuilding fans, and also I suppose the fringe bodybuilding fans he gets as well. And you know some of us see it as well because most of my views come from when you look at it, it's like seventy percent come from just the browse feature on YouTube. It's not, it's less of my subscribers actually watch my stuff. So mm. it's just a lot of random people that might be fringe bodybuilding fans, hardcore bodybuilding fans, it sort of vary. So if I'm saying Sergio's in, how does he look versus this guy versus this guy? Then you might get some fringe guys that go, I'm going to check out that live stream, you know? But we yeah. have to have, a, I think, an easier way and a maybe more consistent live streams and whatnot. Mm. But if they follow the contest for the whole weekend, that's how some people might actually l- get into bodybuilding so more of that sort of stuff more excitement like we sort of spoke about um i think will just lead to more people being into bodybuilding because i think it's a, a good era for it but i'll bring up the cali pro competitor list in just a moment i'm just gonna find where i actually put that i'll put it on another page but the list isn't huge and also like patrick moore is meant to be in this show and he was not on that list uh, oh, i don't know if he's been to, added to it i meant to text brian about that no he guys he, he made a post like a couple hours ago Oh, oh, did he? Yeah, he, he was just talking in his car, and he said that he's not going to do Cali because um, he had, like, s- some mishaps a couple weeks ago. Remember he made, like, a post, like, a month ago and saying that things were going – he he, he, he he commented on something saying he wasn't – like, some shit was going wrong or something. Hmm. And, um, probably personal issues. I mean, we don't know. Everybody, everybody dealing with something, right? And so yeah, it threw yeah. him off. He even admitted it. I mean, that's what's cool. I, I actually glad he went on there and said it. He's like – you know, it, it made me take a step back, and so I was behind. Um, so now I'm going to go do – I think he said he's going to go do – or he's going to do Orlando, he said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, versus you, Stan. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he, he addressed it, and he said it. He's like, I, I know I was on the list, and that was my plan, but I had uh, something about mishap weeks ago. Um, you know, now I, I wasn't ready for the show, so I'm going to focus on Orlando. Cool. I know yeah. he wants to do the Texas Pro, so I heard, but – Yeah. I thought, he was, I, thought he was, I thought he was going to go beat Hunter, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's like, oh, Hunter's looking a little big right now. <laughs> Maybe <I'd be> <laughs> Hunter's, looking, Hunter's looking pretty fucking good right now. <laughs> Ken says against Stan. Stan. <laughs> it, it seems like Hunter's get, like, from when you saw him, Brett, like he was looking big then, but it seems like just lately he's kept that waist real tight. Like he actually, I think you went underrated a little bit about Pittsburgh pro guest posing too. Like I think even I underrated him a bit, but when I've seen, 
I saw some footage actually yesterday of that and it was just iPhone footage. But sometimes I feel like it, you know, everyone knows what footage looks like from a bodybuilding comp on their iPhone. And I saw the way he looked there and maybe because he's a bit sharper than some of the guys, but I was actually like, oh, on second look, I'm more impressed with him than I was initially. Like, what did you think, Brett, of Hunter, like, I suppose, when you're out there with Gasp and compared to now and what you've seen? I think dude, he's, he's got it, man. He's got everything. He, you know, he, all his thing is, is he just needs a peak. And I've had this conversation with him. I'll say it to his face. He just needs a peak for the for, for real for the first time. You know what I mean? Like, better yep. than 85%. Yeah. He's just – I don't think he's ever peaked over 85% of his potential. And he's still never lost a – uh, a show besides the Olympia. That's the crazy part. You know, he has all the parts. He just has to bring it all together with the, you know, with the dryness, with the hardness at the end. You know, he's always, he, he looks phenomenal at what, not, what is he, nine, 10 weeks out right now? Waist yeah. is down. Yeah. Um, and I mean, honestly, we got to kind of give a little credit to, <laughs> to Nick Trigilli making all those videos to make him start eating whole foods. It, it did work. <laughs> we we got to admit, it did work. And I was around him and I kind of yeah. gave him shit for that because, you know, I was dying. So we were, we were at that gym, Dennis James gym. I don't remember what it's called down there. I, Stu, you used Dennis to one. Yeah, yeah. We were there. We yeah. were training. We were leaving. And we were walking out the door, and this this kid, like, bro, this like skinny guy, was like, "Hey, Hunter, how's the Whole Foods treating you?" <laughs> bro, I I like stopped and I like Little prick I looked over at Hunter, and like you could just see it on his face. He just got like pissed. You know, it's just like, he's like, "Why do I feel it?" Like I looked at him. I go. I'm like, I'm letting you handle this. I just walked out the door and, the, yeah. and the, he comes walking out. We, he started laughing with me because I was dying, dude. I was like, dude, you got these like kids coming up to you and telling you to eat whole food and everything now. But the thing is like, he, I mean, he was, yeah, I think he really has cut out all the protein shakes and stuff. And there yeah. is some truth to that. There really is, you know, look at the midsection. I mean, just the, the inflammation in the water hole. And like, you can, you can just tell there is a little bit of a difference when it comes to subcutaneous and everything. So my coolness too. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's it's working. I think he's on a good groove. Um, I mean, I, even though Stu Stu looked just as good as he did, you know, recently too. That was a good guest posing out of you guys. He was probably still drinking shakes back then. Yeah, probably. He probably cut him out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's actually eleven weeks out here, so he's he's in great, I suppose, in a great spot to look. I think he's going to look his best ever, just based on these updates as well. It seems like there's more muscle there. It seems like it's like harder more mature looking for this far out like it's just to me it's a different look and you got to remember as well like he obviously does well in the judging in general because he plays fourth at that olympia yeah. and i i remember hearing as well dennis james saying that like hunter's better in person like he was he was like yes. right up there and he said hunter's Absolutely. definitely better to see in person so very big that like you yeah. don't realize it just just standing here he's like he's a big dude there's, there's some people that doesn't just shows on the screen like you know some people they you really have to see them in person to catch their size and he is one of them and like brett said it's not a matter of like he's really missing anything it's just that peak because yeah. he's always like looking great the whole prep he's never really get way off in the off season anyway it's just that peak you know the last uh last adjustments he hasn't nailed it yet so hasn't been able to yeah. show his work i, I think have he, a I think theory a, about sorry, hunter guys that I'd like your guys' opinion on. So he's never, like you said, he's never really peaked 100% for a show, right? Like he won nationals. He won, I think Chicago is probably his best condition, I think. You know, he won He won Tampa. He's won all these shows without being like 100%. And I, I think maybe what the issue is, is like he's never gotten like over dieted, really dug out, stringy, shredded. Like, I think we've all kind of done that at some point. Like we kind of overdid it. But then the next time you do that, next time you do a prep, like you get in shape way easier to get to that point again, right? Yeah. I don't think he's ever – I don't know if he's ever done that. He's kind of gotten away with it because he's got all these other attributes that are like really good that mm -hmm. where he can win shows. But like I wonder if maybe he needs to like overdo it at least once, get on you know stage what? like stringier and lighter than he really should be in the open, right? And then, you know, once he hits that true condition for the first time, it's going to be like – just automatic from from there on out. Does that make sense? I think mm -hmm. I think you are a thousand percent correct, and I think the best thing he could do, the, the their team could do, is take the scale away. Literally, not use the scale right. the entire prep. I think that I think if he did that, I think he would be the, the best version times two right there. Because like 
I think it, I think it's like, and it is with all of us. We've been there, right? But I think it's more so with him. Like, if you notice, every every update has the weight listed. You know, it's just like screw the weight, screw the weight. You have enough size. That's just yeah. the last four weeks. Just get dug the fuck out and like just listen to your coach. You know, don't you know don't don't try to debate because you think you're going too flat. I agree completely. I think I think if he did that and then filled back up, maybe came in early, like you said, like maybe six weeks to two weeks out, just fucking dig. Don't look at the scale and then fill back up the last two into the show. I, I, I think it'd be a whole different hunter for sure. And, you know, and maybe you lose a couple pounds of tissue, but like yeah. if you're peel, that's your, it's not going to matter. And, you, you know, you give yourself the time to dig yourself out of the hole at the end too. Like, look at Dorian Yates. Why did he win? Because yeah. he was the most conditioned because he over dieted, but he put so much size on in the off season that mm-hmm. he could over diet a little bit and still sacrifice some size pulling down some weight pulling down just to get to that conditioning level. Yeah. yeah. Like, also, and it's, the shakes like, uh, that could play a part too. You know, when he's cutting down, like you, the food, the calorie intake is way lower. The, the, the liquid just goes through so much. So maybe he's losing too much fullness at some point. And he was, that's what he was always scared to get into that over dieted phase where his weight just shoots down. And uh, that's why maybe he never done it. But like with having the, the whole food, uh, the whole prep, be able maybe to control that, you know, that descent a little better and be able to just get lower in body fat without like, fucking for, like just dropping weight. And like well said, if you're too focused on that, just panicking and, you know, screwing everything up. <laughs> yeah. And as well with shakes is, uh, too, like a lot of the time those shakes are absorbed reasonably quickly. And when you're dieting, if you're going low on carbs and, in stuff in general, your body has a process called gluconeogenesis where it's converting a certain amount of those amino acids into glucose. So it's an inefficient thing for the body to actually have to do. So if your body's doing that a lot when you're having extra shakes and you're not doing many calories and you don't have those carbs to sort of yeah. preserve those amino acids to have them used for what they're meant to be used for, it's, it's a, just an inefficient process. So I think that I notice when I diet and I'm eating more whole foods, I feel like for the same amount of calories, I actually get leaner. Like I, I notice my body and I feel like I stay a little bit fuller as well. So I might do one shake a day or two, maybe at the start of a prep if I'm doing seven servings of protein a day. But yeah, doing like three or four, I feel like I would just feel terrible and hungry anyway, you know, and just not feel that same level of fullness in the gym. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't, doesn't feel the same, I guess, but post-workout and stuff. Yeah. It's still, I think useful. Yeah. But um, somehow we really got off track and we talked a lot yeah, about yeah, Hunter yeah, in the yeah. middle of <laughs> track. I forgot. We, we, we got into some good conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, I liked it. I liked it, but I don't even know how we what got were we to talking about, Oh, yeah, Cali Pro. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Patrick, Patrick Moore was potentially going to take Moore. on Hunter. Oh, and yeah. we, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went way off, um, <laughs> but I like it. It was a good conversation, like you said. Um, I'll pull back up that competitors list uh, in just a moment. So there's the competitors list there. Yeah, we've got obviously Ross Flanagan, who I'll pull up some pictures of him. He's shocked me. Like last year, he actually surprised me because I'm like, oh, I had no idea this dude was this good. And he's the owner of um, uh, Flavor Gang. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure I got that right. And um, he looks ridiculous. I'll pull up some photos. Brett, you obviously got your own sauce um, as well. butcher, Butcher sauce? Correct. Yeah, so obviously you know um, Ross. How, what do you think about how he's looking? Because I'm actually like really impressed. His lines and everything look way cleaner than last year. His physique just looks healthier overall. Um, how do you think he'll do in this lineup? I think he's gonna do extremely well. I got him in the I got him in the top three um, here with, with this lineup we see right now. But definitely in the the first call out. I think he. I mean, he caught my attention last year. You know, in that prep lean all the way it was Indy um, that yeah. he. He really screwed up because he made some poor decisions there. Um, he, he talks about it openly all the time, but like <laughs> he, he combined alcohol and um, THC, and that's not a good combo, especially the night before a competition. He, he took um, like a hundred milligram edible, and he never takes edibles, and yeah. it really fucked him up. I don't know. And like <laughs> the thought process there. I mean, I, I you know you got to talk to him about that. I'm not sure what was going on, but um, but Stan like, said like, there like a hundred milligrams ain't shit. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You started to see this last year, like leading to that show, like especially from behind, you know, from the backside, like, you know, not many people have like glute hand tie ins like that, you know, just um, just the overall posterior chain. He, he's not missing anything. And then his quads from the front are phenomenal, you know, great, you know, great size, great, you know, shape coming through. 
Um, From the side, man. Look at that. Look at that hamstring yeah. drop. And he, he's just a pro's pro, honestly, when it comes to execution daily. You you can see it. he's just always working. You know, he's a strickler on getting whatever, getting steps in or whatever, but it's just movement. Like I said, he's always he's always working, you know, on his business and on the bodybuilding side of things. Um, and just a just a good dude. So, you know, he's doing this for himself, and you can kind of tell it's like it's kind of a revenge thing because, like you said, they, a year ago he really fucked it up. So now it's like, hey, I want to prove myself wrong. You know, so he's going to come out there, and I think they don't need to do too much. He's been ready, I think, for the last couple weeks. I think there's some videos and pictures of him next to Tonio. Like a yes, few I, ago. And I like featured he, that in one of my videos. He's standing next to Tonio. It's not like Tonio's making him look like an amateur or anything. You know what I mean? It's like it's a good matchup, you know? So I, I think I, he he's someone that I will see. Like he'll get compared to Tonio. He'll get compared to Stu, and I think it's going to be a good, good matchup. My only no, I agree, man. Him is you mentioned the, like the number of steps he's doing. Ross is a psycho, so he like when he gets close to a show at the end of prep, he starts setting all these crazy business goals. He gets hyperactive. He starts expending like a ton of calories when his food's low, and like I'm worried that like he might overdo it because he just can't sit still. Right. That's just his personality type, you know. Um, but obviously, he's not going to have to worry about being in shape. Um, it's just like, you know, is he, is he accumulating too much fatigue to run around, do all the crazy shit that he does? Are, are they going to be able to tell him just to sit his ass down for the last four days right now? Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I agree with that too. That could, and that could have been part of the whole THC plus all that lean in anxiety, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, just Trying to calm down. nervousness, but, um, I mean, he's there right now. So it's just about these next four days. It's going to. You're, you're exactly right, Stu. It's going to come down these next four days, and if he's able to let the body rest, get the final inflammation off, you know, let the legs fill out, even though his legs are pretty full always. Anyway. I don't think they need to fill out, dude. Look yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's made such crazy improvements. What do you think, Stan? Obviously, like, a very improved body order from last year, and he's posting up a lot of the back shots. Yeah. I mean, because he's in condition for a back. I want to see more front ones, but I have a look for that um, – that video with Tony as well um, while you're talking. But what do you think? No, he's very complete. The conditioning is on point. So he just has to bring this to stage. <laughs> and he's yeah. agree with it. Yeah. Exactly. I think he needs like what he needs to go to like the next, next level where he can walk into smaller shows and win them is probably just that little bit more on the upper body. But yeah, overall, I'm just yeah so impressed. I had no idea he would get to this level in a few years time, but He's doing it now already, so um, that's incredibly impressive. But um, who else do we have in the lineup? I mean, we've got Siang Chul Lee, who's obviously a guy that beat Samson Dowder um, you know, a couple of years ago now. Great shape, a lot of muscle. It just generally comes down to conditioning for him. I'll try to find some photos, but he rarely posts much either, yeah. which I feel like he he's missing a lot, obviously, being over there in Asia and not not posting. Because like, if you're one of the big guys over there, you're – going to be pretty popular probably doing very well financially but um he's Stu, you about going to say something about siang chul yeah like so i i competed against him in tampa actually and you know condition was like some of these korean guys don't really get really hard he wasn't in great shape there but like i actually was significantly bigger than him in tampa last year but he's got like a really small head and it makes him look really big when he's standing <laughs> on his and then I've got like the opposite problem. So like, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't think he'd beat Samson again. That's for sure. But, you know, yeah, shape. He, he could be in the top five. You know, he's put together pretty good. He's got good shape and flow and stuff like that. So, no, I'm I'm trying to find. Oh, here we go. I found his Instagram. It's just another example of somebody that we say if they show up in shape. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we, we've been here yeah. before, so it's just. A matter of we we can't really can't anticipate that to happen. So it's just if it happens, oh, it's it's more than likely not. Yeah, yeah. Lionel Bakey style. Um, yes. <laughs> sort of like if he if he comes in shape, then great. But I hope he doesn't pull. The, I hope he doesn't pull the most recent Lionel. <laughs> yeah, I know that that was heartbreaking, man. I mean, especially um, with the cow because the cow is historically more like prone to to like reward conditioning. So I think this is going to. Do you, do you think there's any difference in judging, um, like at the California Pro, or do you think it's just that like people just know you have to be in better condition at the Cali Pro? 
I think there's just certain shows with like the judges that usually are at that shows, they reward like more mass or more conditioning. And it's just, if you like New York historically, it was always more like a size, size show, you know, like bigger bodies well, in California. Just, man, more, no. In California, it's just, but, uh, I think it's just, if you look at the past winner, there's a trend and if you see that, you know, that's all. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No, I agree. Uh, this was probably his best package. I think he came 10th at the Olympia or maybe 11th here. I can't quite remember, but he sort of surprised me because he brought, I thought, his best conditioning to date. And he's got like a really nice shape, round muscle bellies. But I just think that overall, since he competed at the Olympia here, the overall bodybuilding landscape has sort of changed. And I think the overall quality has changed, you know? So I think that it's still a phenomenal physique. And if he does hit the mark like at least gets to this sort of thing. He's got, you know, striations through the chest. Olympia wasn't the best lighting either. And yeah, his conditioning there, I was, yeah, pretty overall impressed with. But, you know, I saw him next to Samson as well during this prep when Samson went over to Korea and they're posing side by side, you know, when all the Koreans are going, wow, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> then uh, Samson was so much bigger than him um, now. But I was like, oh, okay, wow, maybe he's not competing this year. It's just that Samson was so enormous. He was like 300 and whatever pounds. So I think yeah. that, yeah, for him to beat Samson again, there would have to be some sort of catastrophe from Samson <laughs> in the next couple of years at least anyway and for him to add a crazy amount. But he can still be a factor if he's in shape, but I just don't have the faith that he'll be in shape in this show. So um, Yeah, there, there was a now, couple of Korean guys in New York who were – uh, I actually posed with one of them, the 212 guy uh, at Bez. And, like, uh, they, they're put together really good. They got good muscle on them. It's just, like, they're not hard. Like, one they of the guys like, in the open look like They look like they're, out. like, three weeks out always, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's weird. I don't know if they can't get the, the pharmaceuticals they need over there or, like, whether they agree to me. Well, that one guy, the, the mass or whatever, he's with Milo. She's been here for the last couple months. Yeah. So I expected him to come in a little – Tired. Too much insulin, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. He was plenty full. We'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thousand milligrams, fifty IU's. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a touch. It's a touch. <laughs> oh yeah, Milos is funny, man. He, he <laughs> loves his insulin, but um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I love how open he is as well. Like <laughs> he was saying about he was saying about Max Charles because he actually started working for Max Charles for this last New York Pro as well. So I mean, that's why Max was a bit fuller again. Oh, yeah. um, they're, they're working together again. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, Max wow. apparently contacted him a, a month or two out and says we've got some unfinished business or something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, obviously he realized working with Milos is probably the best he looked in in some time. So. I'm glad yeah, they're working looked, together again. Yeah, he worked. He looked better with him for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he looked better again than his last shows. The last shows, I was like, he's done. And then he came in this show, six, you know, not his best, but I think he's probably going to get back and get somewhat close to it. He'll, but, do um, well at, uh, he'll do well at the Masters Olympia. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to be up against like Josh Lenardowitz and because Josh has just moved to Dubai, I believe. Well, he put up a post saying he's moving uh today i think or to, or what? yesterday tuesday or wednesday oh, yeah he's yeah. moving there for the prep so he's oh shit he's taking this serious serious <laughs> I, I think he needs to man he's got a couple of kids at home and also like he's obviously gone through what he's gone through he still has pain as well from you know where he had those uh yeah. the brain tumors yeah. and whatnot um but he's he's got the go ahead from his you know medical people they said you know it you know if it hurts a bit then i think you can sort of just have to push through it so i think eating and training you know to a certain weight i think it definitely hurts him but i don't think it's detrimental to him it's just a pain thing but he has to push through and he has to push through a bit more than probably the average person to do this prep so um i know he's a bit unwell as well so i think he's going to go out to dubai a little bit earlier but i think he's a little bit i don't know if he had like a bit of a flu type thing or something like that but I or they thought he maybe had covid or glandular fever which is called i think mono in america but i don't I don't believe he ended up having that, at least hopefully not anyway. So, but um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, in, interesting Masters Olympia. But let's uh, do some predictions for this show. Let me pull the list back up. 
And Stu, obviously, you probably won't be doing predictions apart from you might say. Do I have to do yeah, well, you, you call yourself a mediocre, <laughs> mediocre pro bodybuilder. So. I will be <laughs> right in the center of the lineup, yeah. <laughs> just just mediocre. Um, <laughs> but, um, guys, I'll go to you for uh, – who wants to go first, Brett, Stan? I mean, I, I really don't know many guys on this list, so I – I think it's going to turn four. out. I think it's going to turn out identical, you know, to New York being a two-man call out between Stu and Tony O, um, just because those guys are. I think they're just a little bit ahead above. I have Ross in third, um, and then after that, probably maybe Sang Chu Lee that we were talking about. But then after that, I don't know any other guys. Uh, you got the same as me, man. You got the same as me. Um, not, this is the depth isn't there in this one. And we got some good top four. If Sergio shows up, that'll be a good top five. Um, but after that, it kind of falls out. So where would you put Sergio? Um, I don't know, man. I I, I need it. The thing is, we see we just saw Stu and Antonio, so I know how conditioned they are. I don't. We we've only seen we've only seen. Sergio's upper body, which looks, you know, in tank tops, he looks like Mr. Olympia, right? But I want to, mm-hmm. I, I want to see his hamstrings, I want to see his glutes, I want to see the legs up close, not just long shots before I could, you know, put him there. But he'd he'd definitely be in that in the top three running for sure. Yeah, I, I'm glad we don't have to predict Sergio in this now because I'm like Tonio, I'm like he's a guy that I could see, you know, with I don't know maybe the way he looks now as well, cracking the top ten at Olympia. Potentially, you know, because last year was a really, really good year. In 10th, we had Rafael Brandeo. In 11th, we had Ian Valier, but that was an off version of Ian, or at least for Ian. It was a little bit off, you know. Um, he didn't pose as well and whatnot. So it's like, does Tonio beat the version of Ian from the Olympia last year? So I'm like, okay, well, that might mean Tonio is a top 10 guy or top 11 or top 12 in the world. And then to, to say, oh, Sergio walk in and, and beat that, you can't just say that straight up because Sergio... Yeah as good as he can be, he hasn't reached his full potential as yet. And Sergio said that, but is this, is this going to be a version where we see Sergio come in his best shape? And also he looks much bigger as well. So you're like, you know, is this the show where he sort of breaks out? Cause like you said, he looks like Mr. Olympia in a t-shirt in a singlet, but I, I think in the past Sergio's looked good in a singlet in the gym and he looked good in preps, but he still hasn't looked as near as big as he looks right now. So I agree with that, but he, also he's in between 290 to 300 in like, but what's the condition at? You know what I mean? Like that, mm-hmm. that's huge. And if you if you can be peeled at 290, then then we're talking. He's gonna be the conversation for better than top 10. You know what I mean? Like he's truly yeah. peeled, but you know he, he's getting way up there. So it'll it'll be interesting. Yeah, I have well, no idea where like, he's gonna land exactly. Uh, like if he's not there yet, you know, he like he's been dieting for a while. He's been like ready to, you know, do the honor basically now months ago, or three weeks ago. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, like he should be like within striking distance now. Like really, like I imagine his glutes to be peeled and like like we've never seen him. And his size, it looks like his proportion are better than ever. Um, so I I see him like if he was to show up here for me, I would see him immediately as a favorite for sure. Um, yeah, but it's gonna be. Oh, it's not, but like when you have someone the size of Sergio and like bringing the right conditioning to the stage, it's it's with his wits and all he's got. It's it's hard to beat. <laughs> but right now, with yeah. what we have, we're gonna definitely see a rematch of uh, last weekend. <clears throat> I think Patrick can also be. Uh, no, we said Patrick is not doing it. He's doing it. He's not, not doing it. We're not doing it. Okay. And so yeah, I see. Uh, then I can see Ross. And uh, what did I see? Zheng uh, Lee? Well, yeah, if he, if he brings, uh, you know, if he nails the condition. Well, he could be in the, in, with his shape on me, but, but I don't know Nathan. I don't know Rafael, all those California guys. Marius and Slavoj were in New York. Uh, there's a lot of Eastern European guys, guys and girls competing at that show. A lot of uh, different accents and stuff back the yeah. stage, but um, I don't. I can't think of what they look like. I didn't see their pictures. Uh, not, got... not, not big enough. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. Not big enough to battle you guys. That's for, that's for sure. But Marius, I think he's got a really nice shape and, and good structure. I can't remember his exact conditioning level at this show just gone, but he, he impressed me last year. I was just, but this, this year as well. Actually, I, he was in good condition, but I was like, he just needs to be bigger overall to, to battle. It's just that 
simple. He hasn't got any obvious sort of weaknesses, maybe a little bit more in his back, but yeah, just needs more overall. Uh, pretty much the same as uh, Slavov Bednar as well. And yeah, I don't think there's anyone else that's going to challenge. I have the exact same predictions as you two guys as well. So it's, it's, it's sort of... Um, I mean, it'll be very interesting. Like, if Sergio jumps in, it'll give this show a real injection of excitement. But I am very excited to see Ross Flanagan as well. And also just to see, you know, I spoke to uh, Dylan uh, Blum or Dylan Blum. Uh, he um, he basically, I said to him, I said, <laughs> I always have to say Blum because I had no idea how to say I was saying Blum and Blum and he confirmed it's Blum. Um, but I said to him, I said, you know, I said, as long as, you know, you don't do anything wild with Tonio. I said, you know, he, he looks like he's sort of, because we've never like missed it, missed it in general, apart from maybe a little bit at the Olympia. But I said, you know, it seems like he's got a hard physique to mess up. And he, he just wrote back, not true. He's like, this dude changes hourly. Like his, his physique changes quite a bit. So, I did you know, you never know. I did see he was with Hunter yesterday or the day before, and he was chugging. chugging I know. Like, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, go, go, that's that's right. I go, Stu, <laughs> Stu, you got to take advantage of this. He's over there chugging <laughs> milkshakes. You're, you you got you got to bring a little extra conditioning, and you got this. He's, he's over there drinking these – RTDs or whatever they're called, and just <laughs> the milkshake for Sunday. <laughs> that shake's gonna mess up the digestion, and he's going, "Oh, Stu, Stu got mad. He just left." <laughs> no, I, I did that accidentally. I was, I was, I was removing the screen. Sorry, Stu. <laughs> I removed the wrong one. <laughs> but um, I yeah, I saw that too. I'm like, I would, I wouldn't even do that on prep. I, I think that's kind of my only hope here. You know, if Tony shows up, all the Labrada, Labrada, and RTDs. Yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> Hunter's like working uh, on my behalf. You know, behind the scenes, sprinkling some shit in his RTD. I don't know, but yeah, I, I I don't I like I was telling Xavier last night. I'm not gonna do any weird, crazy shit to like try and look different at this show. You know, it's another week of dieting. I might be a little bit better, but um, I'm not gonna do some hail mary shit and try and change anything and screw up what was good in new york so yeah that's about my only chance of, of beating him if he shows up off so yeah so what's it sorry, sorry you guys dan okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my question was like what's what's your plan like so after this show you have like you're gonna keep competing or you're gonna keep, like what if the goal is to qualify the olympia or you taking uh, yeah, I'm so I I still got a day job, sadly. So I gotta I gotta get back to work. Um, I just burn all my PTO for these shows. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna you know be focusing on like trying to build up my coaching stuff and so on uh, after these shows, trying to get that rolling more. Um, but I I don't anticipate I'll compete again this year. I'm also gonna be trying to move back up to the Pacific Northwest up to Washington where my parents are um, by like the end of the summer. So I'm going to be really busy. I can't be doing that when I'm in prep, unfortunately, yeah. but I don't know, do, do a couple shows, you know, make some, make some noise and get in, get out and book some other shit after that. That's kind of my, my plan right now. So yeah. you're saying like move up to Washington state. Yeah. 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 My parents okay, live yeah. up there. It's very confusing for Australians because anytime anyone says Washington, they think Washington DC straight away. Like yeah, a lot of people don't know the sort of states of America. Right, Northwest. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's. I had to think about that. I'm like Northwest. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's Washington. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously, like being up there, man, it's like pretty cold. Like how how would you go from going from Arizona up to that area? Well, so I, I grew up in Washington and Oregon, uh, and I just came down here like a year ago. So I, I'm used to it, and I really, you know, I hadn't been back in a long time, and I just, uh, you know, that, that Emerald Cup posing, guest posing where Hunter and I were there, that was up in Washington. Yep. So uh, visited my parents and went back home, and I was like, man, I miss this shit so much because it's everything's season, just green and beautiful. The and, felt good, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah, I miss that. Uh, I don't, and I, I almost wish it would have rained on me. Yeah, you don't get that, do you? No. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I also just want to be near my parents too, because my mom is a very good cook, and she has a <laughs> bunch of leftovers that I couldn't help out with while I was prepping. But I'll be clearing out her fridge pretty soon here. <laughs> it's quite funny. Like when I go, I've been when I was living in Western Australia, like Perth, and it's quite hot over there. And then I'd go fly back to Tasmania, which is 
quite the opposite. It gets pretty cold. Um, but it's like you go for like we have like a in Hobart, you've got a mountain that overlooks like sort of the city. And it's like you go for a walk around there and it's like, you know, it's like rainforesty in one bit. And you, then you're like looking at all the views and stuff. I'm like, it's not like this in Perth. You know, it's like it's more hot and you've got the beachy weather and all that sort of stuff. So it's like completely different vibes, but you definitely miss sort of what you're not around. And when you get back to where around where you like sort of grew up, it's like nostalgic, like all the memories come back and like, but you think about all the good. It's like, it's like, it's like an older relationship. If you break up with someone and you're single and you think about the relationship, you go, yeah, but it was so good. They were, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you start thinking about all the good stuff. But then if you start dating them again, then it's generally like, oh, I forgot about all the shit stuff about it. <laughs> so just think about that before you go back in case there's a lot of shit stuff there. <laughs> Cause you uh, might. I don't, the only shit stuff is the rain and I don't really mind that. So I'll be okay. You're good, yeah, that, man, that's yeah. kind of my plan for the rest of the year. Uh, just focus on other, other shit after after the shows here, and you know, I, st- I still got work to do. You know, I I, I got to bring up my back more. I got to bring up my adductors more. There's stuff here and there that you know. Until there's I always get, there's always will be. <laughs> sure, yeah. I, you know, until, until I kind of bring that stuff up, I still got gaps that are just going to hold me back in these in, in shows. Uh, mm. So, got work to do. Fair, fair. But, um, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty much it for this show, guys. And I know, Stan, you've got to head off and train. You're obviously in prep and um, got to get it done. But, um, yeah, is there any updates from you guys? Like, Brett, do you have any updates on your butcher hooks or anything you've got going on? Having a baby? Not too, not too much. Just rolling on that and rolling on becoming a dad. So that'll be <laughs> – that's the steps. And I've actually taken this taking this whole week off from training. So this is my last this – is, this is my week off to get – used to everything get you know settled in and then it's a sprint to the um to the olympia so i will you know i kind of came off everything here for the last couple of weeks and then i'll you know in the next couple of weeks i'll start reintroducing and really pushing so highest i got i was waking up at like 285 uh, a couple of weeks ago nice. and then um obviously i'll lose a little weight here just with the baby and stuff but then do one more big push and it leads the crazy part is like i know we're talking about these shows but man before you know it we'll be we'll be talking about the Olympia, so I gotta, I gotta be ready. A lot of, a lot of big training ahead for me as well. Mm. Yeah, that's exciting, man. I am very excited. I've, I've thought about that in my back head, back of my head too. I'm like, you've got such a big year having a kid, competing in your first Olympia. It's, um, it's exciting times, man. You only get one first Olympia and one first child, so that's right. Both coming <laughs> in the same year, so that's pretty exciting. Um, as well, like I'll put the link to the butcher hooks in the description below, and obviously you've got guys like. Nick Walker that trained with them and a lot of the top pros from around the world. So they're legit. They're quick, strap strap them on, take them off. Like it's, it's, they're a very quick sort of like lifting stri- uh, hook, not strap <laughs> really, but yeah. Um, so make sure you guys check them out. Um, Stu, do you want to obviously promote anything? You've got the Discord and whatnot going on. I can put the link to all that in the description below also. Yeah, just the Discord. I st- oh, shoot, I still need to send you that, actually. Uh, but yeah, just yeah. Uh, if you want to come in and banter and talk shit, join our Discord, and uh, we will be merciless. But uh, you'll, you'll have fun, I promise. <laughs> yeah. And Stan, do you have anything you want to promote? Anything you want to put out? Uh, yeah, I mean, just my YouTube channel. I've been started pushing more content lately, and I've started something new, so I'm just kind of waiting for feedback. So I'm like translating like uh, instantly both french and english so i'm going back and forth french and english so everybody can understand what i'm saying i was doing mostly french before uh, otherwise if, if i wasn't working with a videographer so now like uh, i'm explaining everything both in french and english so <laughs> a little more Very nice for the people watching this if they want to learn a little more what i'm doing and follow up uh, my prep then uh, they can have uh, that information available for them in english and it's that, that's that. TV. <laughs> channel TV. Yeah, I'll put the link in the description below for that as well. Both uh, your YouTube channels. Do you have a YouTube channel yet? Like even launched? Uh, no, no. Maybe, maybe eventually we'll get there. Okay. When you get that, we'll start <laughs> pumping that into the description as well. But um, yeah, both Brett's and Stan's uh, YouTube channels in the description below as well. So thank you guys so much for doing this. And uh, Stu, best of luck for the weekend for the Cali Pro. Oh, Never yeah, know you could be it. Yeah. You could be a fellow uh, Mr. Olympia competitor, competitor this year with Brett if uh, if the lineup strikes right, man. So best of <laughs> luck with it all, and I'm sure you're going to look awesome once again. But that's it for this episode. For myself, Xavier Wills, Stanimal, Stan Delonju, Stuart, Beef Stew, Sutherland, and Brett the Butcher Wilkin, we are... 
Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Bodybuilding University. If you did enjoy it, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you won't miss out on any episodes of Bodybuilding University and any videos from desktop bodybuilding, including my series like Who Wins, where I face bodybuilders up against each other. Also daily bodybuilding news live, where I go daily and I go live on there and you guys can interact with me in the comments, uh, You know, give it likes and give your opinions as well. So make sure you do subscribe and it'd be much appreciated. And that's it for us here at Bodybuilding University. So for all of us at Bodybuilding University and myself, Xavier Wills, we are out. <laughs>